African American leaders gathering to discuss an initiative, find out what they have to say about communities of color having access to the vaccine. AHN St. Vincent Hospital held a massive vaccination clinic today. Coming up, we'll hear from the president of the hospital along with a couple people and their stories. The U.S. is approaching a grim milestone as nearly 500,000 American lives have been lost to COVID-19. Live in high definition from your news leader, this is Jet 24 Action News at 11. New at 11, local African-American clergy leaders meeting to discuss a plan to protect communities of color. Chelsea Swift joins us in the control room with more about why these leaders are encouraging the community to trust COVID vaccines. Chelsea? Hi, Brian. They say they are advocating for more people of color to have access to vaccines to better protect themselves from this virus that has killed so many. It is our responsibility as black pastors to provide uh, our institutions as locations. Charles Mock and other members of the African American clergy gathering to address the need for vaccines in local black and brown communities, whether it be at local churches or community centers. We're trying to partner with the AAC and the NAACP is to get greater access from their churches. Uh, pastors have always been looked at as leaders of our community, and as they get vaccinated, their congregation will follow. Sherrod says the Minority Community Investment Coalition has teamed up with Allegheny Health Network to ensure the community's access to vaccines at larger distribution sites like the Erie Insurance Arena. One member of the African American clergy says he received both doses of the COVID vaccine to encourage communities of color to do the same. Some of them have developed this idea that the vaccine could be harmful to them. I took the vaccine to let them see at this point I'm three weeks past the second vaccine and I'm fine. Radcliffe says after receiving the Moderna vaccine from the VA hospital, he is living proof that the vaccine can be more helpful than harmful. I say to them, whichever negative uh, reactions you've heard of, is nothing compared to 450,000 people who are not with us now. Now the MCIC is working with Allegheny Health Network to set up vaccine appointments as they become available. And today they set up 500 appointments for people in the community. Brian? Chelsea, thank you very much. AHN St. Vincent Hospital held the region's largest vaccination clinic since the 1950s today. Julia Hazel shares more on the vaccination event at Erie Insurance Arena. Allegheny Health Network St. Vincent Hospital held a COVID-19 vaccination clinic at Erie Insurance Arena for high-risk seniors that pre-register. I don't have internet and I was looking for and I had cancer last year so far everything's doing good and they called me and asked me if I wanted to get vaccinated. I said sure. Yeah. This clinic was not offering walk-ins but specifically sought people who needed it the most. Patients that we identified either through our chart or through their physicians as being older than 65 and or having significant health conditions. Especially those in minority groups. 15% of the patients are from the minority or marginalized community. We open slots up for those patients and community leaders are identifying those patients and bringing them to us. 2,500 people are expected to get their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine today. After today's event, AHN St. Vincent Hospital will have given out 17,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine since the pandemic began. We'll continue to have our vaccine clinic back at the hospital. We want to uh, consider other events like this as well based on how the supplies allow. I sit here being, going through the process, getting their first shot, waiting their 15 minutes to make sure they don't have any ill reactions. And now people are offering hope for others. Relax, do what you're supposed to do. Wear your mask, stay six feet apart. Uh, your turn is coming. This is very important. Julia Hazel, Jet 24 Action News. 
The U.S. is approaching a grim milestone. Nearly half a million American lives lost to COVID-19. But the country is seeing some positive trends as the push to get Americans vaccinated continues. ABC's Mary Alice Parks reports that FedEx and UPS are working overtime to ramp up deliveries that were slowed down last week due to severe winter weather. The United States seeing some positive trends in the battle against COVID-19. New cases and hospitalizations both on the decline. The push to get Americans vaccinated continues, but winter storms slowed the distribution of about 6 million doses. Hopefully we'll be able to go back and vaccinate all those people that we have to reschedule or had to cancel. The Biden administration is hoping to get some financial relief to struggling Americans too. Democrats pushing ahead to pass a nearly $2 trillion COVID relief package before unemployment benefits for millions expire March 14th. Their bill would also provide aid to small businesses, $350 billion to state and local governments, and $1,400 in direct payments to most Americans. I'm hoping and praying I can get a, a stimulus to, to a, that will definitely secure me for April for rent. The bill also includes fundings to make schools safer during this pandemic. Many schools across the country don't have the resources to be able to invest in improving facilities, on hiring more bus drivers, on hiring more temporary teachers so we can have smaller class sizes. But that money is not conditioned on schools reopening, which some Republicans are pushing back against. This idea that Washington should be given out a hundred plus million dollars of new billion of new money to schools and not even requiring them to reopen. That's but, an insult but, to those children who are demanding that they go back to school. In line with CDC guidance, President Biden says teachers should be prioritized for getting the vaccine, but that that should not be a requirement for getting them back in the classroom. Biden's chief medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, agrees and says he hopes that Americans will see some sense of normalcy by Christmas. It may or may not be precisely the way it was in November of 2019, but it'll be much, much better than what we're doing right now. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. 27 more people have died across the state due to COVID-19. Here are the latest numbers according to the State Department of Health. Erie County reporting 61 positive COVID-19 cases today. The case total now stands at nearly 17,000. Crawford County reporting 12 new cases. Warren County, no new cases. Ashtabula County, 10 new cases. Chautauqua County continues to report a total of 7,000. 391 cases across the Commonwealth 1906 new COVID-19 cases reported over 913,000 cases have been reported since the beginning of the pandemic the total number of deaths across the state now stands at 23,597 Meanwhile, in Erie County, there have been 34,918 total vaccinations. In Crawford County, 20,262 vaccinations have been performed. And in Warren County, 6,378 shots have been given. Across Pennsylvania, more than 1.9 million people have been vaccinated. Former Erie City Council President President Sonia Arrington's sentencing hearing has been pushed back. It's continuing coverage tonight at 11 o'clock. According to a court order filed on Friday, her sentencing hearing has now been, mo been moved to May 24th. She was scheduled to be sentenced on federal fraud charges this Tuesday. There was no immediate information as to why the change was made. Arrington is accused of stealing money from her nonprofit organization to pay bills, go to Disney World, and feed her gambling habit. She has already pleaded guilty to fraud. Federal sentencing guidelines call for a sentence of at least two years and three months in prison, but Arrington's defense attorney is making a case for probation or house arrest. An eerie man was flown to the UPMC burn center in Pittsburgh after a late night fire at a downtown apartment complex. This happened around 11 p.m. yesterday at the Richford Arms Apartments on State Street. According to the Erie County 911 center, the fire started in a kitchen on the fifth floor of the building. A male tenant suffered severe burns and was life flighted to the UPMC burn center in Pittsburgh. Firefighters were able to put out the fire quickly. The condition of the tenant is unknown. A toddler is in the hospital after a wreck today. According to Erie County 911, the two-vehicle wreck happened around 2.30 on West 10th and Cranberry Streets. One of the vehicles rolled over. Multiple people were transported by ambulance, one of them a toddler. The severity of the injuries is not known at this time. 
And coming up on Jet 24 Action News at 11 o'clock, they are the body's first line of defense against disease. Coming up, can a therapy to boost the body's natural killer cells fight cancer and COVID-19? We'll explain in tonight's health report. That's after a first look at the forecast. Hey, Craig. Brian, watching the winds pick up here tonight. Those will be problematic 